and uh, welcome back to the Garth Roll Baptist Church's <coughs> excuse me, um, adult Bible study group uh, as we continue our continuing Bible study series on Teach Us to Pray. Last Sunday morning, we learned five biblical principles for powerful prayer, specifically, specifically, wow, um, that, that was a different one, but Specifically, we learned that if we want to develop a powerful prayer life, we need to pray and not read nor recite. And that's something that uh, uh, growing up Catholic light, you know, we had our Book of Common Prayer. And so we thought that praying was reading from a book or reciting things like the Nicene Creed or Apostles Creed. Um, that's not prayer. And, and praying if you will, reciting the Lord's model prayer is not prayer either. It's just reciting words. Um, so first of all, we must remember to pray and not just read or recite. We have to remember that God can do anything, but we can do nothing. When we are praying to God, we need to pray believing that God is God. And we are just his servants. You know, we don't tell God what to do. We ask God what we can do for him, but we don't tell God what to do. We should always begin and end with praise. God is pretty amazing, and uh, I think he deserves, uh, he is worthy of more praise than we can ever offer. And so we should always begin and end with praise. And then finally, time is irrelevant. It doesn't really matter how short or how long your prayer is. Long prayers doesn't necessarily make it more spiritual. It only makes it longer. As long as you are praying from the heart, then if you finish in five minutes versus one minute versus ten minutes, doesn't matter. Once you have prayed from the heart, that's what is important. Yeah, I can, I, I think I mentioned last week, uh, it takes about uh, 20 to 30 seconds to read the Lord's model prayer. And we're not supposed to just read nor recite it. But that was the example Christ Jesus gave to us specifically as a teaching plan. Um, so it doesn't, if you only have a short prayer, that's fine. But pray these prayers constantly throughout the day. Um, you know, pray without ceasing. Just keep praying. And remember, you know, God is an amazing God. Uh, and uh, the fact that we have a privilege to be able to pray directly to him um, and to you know, uh, give him our praise directly, that's an amazing thing. You know, other religions don't have what we have because they ain't got God. They ain't got Christ Jesus, so they ain't got none. We have the only true God. And his love, grace, and mercy directly between us and him. We don't have men in dresses. We don't have you know, um, any of that stuff. We get to pray directly to God. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, friends, God desires that we commune and communicate with him. Yeah, you know, I, I, I told the story before, um, y'all probably remember it well, um, but I, I, I remember the story of this little girl and she was sitting there crying and her mother comes over and said, I don't know, I'll just call the girl Ruth. Um, uh, but so little Ruthie is crying and, and the mother comes over and says, well, little Miss Ruthie, why are you crying? And she's just with tears flowing down her face and she's got her little dolly and she says, I hugged my dolly, but my dolly didn't hug me back. Um, and I love that little story. It, it, it's goofy, I, I get it, but it, you know, how do you think God feels when we ignore him in prayer? I'm sure he feels pretty much the same way. He hugs us each and every day, blessing us beyond what we deserve and beyond what we can even count. He can, desires to have us commune with him in prayer. And the Lord's model prayer is probably the best example of the best way that we can commune with God in fervent, effectual prayer that availeth much. But this Sunday morning, we are continuing our continuing Bible study series on Teach Us to Pray with three 
biblical principles to help us grow comfortable with God. And you're thinking, I'm already comfortable with God. We're going to find out in just a few minutes. But we will begin again in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13, where Christ Jesus says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And let me start by asking a super simple question. If you were asked to describe God in two words or less, what would you answer? Any ideas, any answers y'all have? Two words or less, describe God. No, that's okay, because I'm going to give you the answer. Actually, of course, it should come as no su uh, surprise that Christ Jesus already answered that question for us. And by absolutely no coincidence, we find his answer right here in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9, when Christ Jesus started his model prayer with, Our Father. I love that. Two words that describe God, Our Father. That is sweet right there. You know, he's not a, a far off, distant, non existent being. He is our Father. We should all love this right here. It is so amazing. God is not um, invisible power like the Force from Star Wars movies. Quite to the contrary, God is our loving. Heavenly Father, and when Christ Jesus taught us to pray our Father, he revealed for us three biblical principles how we can grow comfortable in God's presence and address him as our Father. First of all, we can enjoy a family relationship with God. God is our Father, which means that we can, you know, Familial relationships are generally, not always, but generally more special than, say, a friendship. This is not just um, a teacher, not just a preacher. This is our father. You know, we can not have a relationship with a book, not even God's holy word. Nor can we have a relationship with rites and rituals like the Catholics do. But no matter how spiritual they may be, you still can't have a relationship with them. We cannot have a relationship with a creative force or an impersonal power. However, we can have a relationship with a person. But what kind of relationship? Well, Christ Jesus answered that question again for us when he taught us to pray, Our Father. If God is our Father, then who are we? We are God's Children, we are to approach God and speak to him as our father. That is a right we have as a child of God to address him, to commune with him as our father. Not just a king, not just any other ruler, not a president, but our Father. It is very important that we understand that prayer is the privilege of family members only. Some would say we are all the children of God because we are all created by God. However, do you remember how Christ Jesus described even the very religious Pharisees in John chapter 8 and verse 44? It's all right, I'm going to read it to you anyway. It says, Ye are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh the lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. Well, God created all of them Pharisees, but according to Jesus, they ain't children of God. They're children of the devil. The Pharisees went to synagogue every Saturday they claim to be uh, uh, to not lie. They claim to not cheat or steal or even commit adultery. They even bragged that they tithed on everything they made, but they were still not God's children. Why? 
according to John chapter 14 and verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. We, you can, you know, do all your rites and rituals. You can, you know, use your little prayer beads to, to pray whatever. Um, you can, you know, make your false claims about Allah and Mary and all that stuff. doesn't matter. There's only one way to God the Father, Christ Jesus. For the majority of people, their earthly father was probably a, a very powerful influence in their lives. It, you know, many sons desire to grow up to be like their fathers. And it is said that many daughters will grow up to marry men like their fathers. Man, I hope my daughters are smart enough to, to not go that route. But whether we uh, intend to do so or not, we learn and mimic the way we speak and communicate from our earthly father. We learn and mimic his uh, mannerisms, his colloquialisms, even his nonverbal body language. Some will even follow in their earthly father's footsteps and their own career choices as well. A father is a very influential figure in our life, but our earthly fathers are not just our, if you will, judges and disciplinarians. Teachers and trainers, they are our leaders and protectors, our sages of wise wisdom and bad dad jokes. They are also our comforters, our helpers, and our walking encyclopedias. Uh, it seems like not a day goes by that I'm not being quizzed on what does this mean? What is this? You know, how does this work? Well, I don't know everything, but um, apparently I'm expected to. And so I try my best, you know, and I tell them when I can't answer, you know, have you heard of Google? You know, Google knows. Google knows everything. But uh, Google can't replace a father. When our mother says, you just wait till your father gets home, it brings trepidation. But when we say, I can't wait until father gets home, it is out of love. There's something special about the family relationship between a child and their father. This fatherly relationship is, by God's design, intended to emulate our relationship with God, our Father. As such, we can take this, this right that we have, being a child of God, and we should be trying to have a relationship even better than we had with our earthly father, have that with our heavenly father. But not everyone can call God father. Only those who have become his children by accepting Christ Jesus as their savior can call God father. It is our right and our right alone. Prayer is a family privilege through which we talk to our Father. You might say, but Brother Roy, I ain't got no good memories of my Father. He never listened to me or even talked to me. He was distant and sometimes even mean. Or you might say, I was abandoned or abused by my Father, so how can I talk to God as a loving Father when the word Father brings back such bad memories? Even though you may not have had a caring, compassionate, loving earthly father, I am confident that you desired one, and even more so, you most certainly did need one too. We all do. Well, as Christians, whether or not we have a perfect earthly father, we all have a perfect father in heaven. And he wants us to talk to him and enjoy a personal relationship with him as our caring and loving father, that family relationship. That is why God reminds us in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7, casting all your care upon God, for he careth for you. God loves us more than we can even understand, certainly more than a, an earthly father can love his own children. God loves us even more than that. And God desires that we have a family relationship with him. But we can also enjoy a very personal relationship with God. Calling God Father seems natural to those who maybe growed up born again. 
But that was just not the way it was done way back in Christ Jesus' day. I didn't grow up born again either. Um, I didn't ever call God Father. You know who we called Father? That guy wearing uh, the, the weird collar that is backwards. We called him Father. He wasn't my father, but that's what we called him. Something's wrong there. They never taught us to pray to our Father in heaven. They, but they taught us to call this guy on earth Father, Father Mike, Father Mike Bonner. Um, uh, you know, he real nice guy, had a crew cut like an old Marine drill sergeant, um, but real nice guy, but he still ain't my father. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, in, in the old covenant days, the fatherhood of God was seen only in the terms of a creator God who fathered the nation of Israel. In the old covenant, God was called father only 14 times and always as the father of the nation of Israel, never on an individual or personal basis. Also, the veil in the temple forever reminded the Jews that <clears throat> only the high priest can approach excuse me, God on a personal basis. And then only once a year on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Do you remember what Numbers chapter 18 and verse 7 warned would happen to anyone except the priest who even came near the veil or inside the tabernacle? Numbers 18, 7 says, Therefore thou and thy sons with thee shall keep your priest's office for everything of the altar and within the veil. And ye shall serve. I have given your priest's office unto you as a service of gift. And the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. You want to go in there to, to visit with the father of Israel, well, you're going to die. They didn't have that right. I thank God that our high priest is Christ Jesus because we have a, a right and a privilege to address God directly. But when people prayed in the Old Covenant, even the greatest of saints would address God only as Lord God. This phrase is used to address God more than 280 times. He's also referred to as God Almighty or the Almighty God more than 50 other times. And God is addressed by several other names, but never as Father on a personal or individual basis. For the Jews, who is their father? Abraham, absolutely. Father Abraham. They don't recognize God as their father. He's the father of Israel only, not of the individuals. But even more amazing is the word which Christ Jesus used for father back in Mark chapter 14 verse 36. Now this is here as Christ Jesus, he's praying in the garden of Gethsemane and he asked God to of course take away that awful cup of suffering and when doing so Christ Jesus addressed God like this and Jesus said, Abba Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. Since Christ Jesus spoke Aramaic, many New Testament scholars believe that Christ Jesus may have begun his model prayer with the name Abba, Father. Abba is Aramaic, um, and it's literally transliterated as A-B-B-A -B -B -A, um, into the Greek like that, which is kind of weird, um, but that's, so it's, Abba is Aramaic, Father is Greek. They have basically the same meaning, Father, Father. Except, this is kind of neat. See, the word Abba is not in either of the two uh, times it's recorded in the Greek text of the Lord's model prayer. It's not there. Abba is not. But he prayed it several other times when he was praying when Christ Jesus prayed, he used it several other times. But the Aramaic word for father literally means more like daddy. Not just father, but that super, super close personal relationship. It's said that anyone can be a father. They call them sperm donors to be crude. I'm not trying to be, but that's a father. Okay, that's great. But a daddy is that special relationship. It takes, you know, a real man to be a daddy. Anyone can be a father. 
This use of the word Abba, Daddy, to refer to God, probably surprised and even confused Christ's disciples since it is a term of affection. The Jews could not even pronounce the name of God aloud, much less call him Father or even more shocking, Daddy. The Jews called themselves the children of Abraham, not of God. However, according to John chapter 1, and verse 12, Christ Jesus made it possible for us to become the sons and daughters of God. But as many as received Jesus, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That's a pretty special relationship right there. But before we can pray to God as Abba, not Abba, the singing group, Abba, Father, we must first become his child by accepting Christ Jesus as our Savior. The word Abba comes from the lips of a child conveying affection towards their earthly father. The word Father expresses an intelligent, if you will, comprehension of the relationship and emphasizes God's position and authority. The two names used together give us a holy balance in our understanding of who God is. Although I am admittedly somewhat uncomfortable addressing God as Daddy, I think Dear Father, Dearest Father even, is certainly both biblical and just as personal, and it is most certainly acceptable to address God as Abba Father, since we would be addressing God exactly as Christ Jesus did when he prayed. You know, sometimes when we read the words of Jesus, we read a Greek version that's been translated into English. What he actually said, we don't always know. But this is the actual Aramaic word that Christ Jesus used, Abba. You can call God, address him as Abba, Father, because Christ Jesus set that example for us. That's the exact word he used, Abba. Being able to call God Father or Abba, Father, is fundamental in growing comfortable with God and enjoying a powerful prayer life. Talking to God as our Father means that we can communicate and personally commune with God, pouring out our hearts as a child to a loving Father. And again, this goes beyond just a, an earthly Father. It goes into the, uh, the Daddy concept, the Daddy who plays with you and, and comforts you and hugs you, wipes away your tears, and sacrifices for you on a daily basis, your Daddy. So as a child of God, we have a right to enjoy a family relationship with God as our Father, but we also have a privilege to enjoy a personal relationship with God as our Abba Father. So to grow comfortable with God, we must understand that we can enjoy a family and a personal relationship with God. And finally, we should desire to address God as Abba Father. Now that's part that one's going to strike you a little, well, I should desire it? Absolutely. If we are spiritually healthy, blood-washed, born-again Christians, God's holy word in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6 teaches us that we will have a yearning or desire to address God as Abba Father. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba Father. Didn't say our Father, our Holy Father, our, you know, it says, Abba, Father. So according to God's Holy Word, one reason God gives us the Holy Spirit is to remind us that we are God's children and should therefore desire to address Him as Abba, Father. This desire is an internal indication that we are indeed God's children. Further, God's Holy Word also teaches us in Romans chapter 8 and verse 15 that we receive the spirit of sonship or adoption. And as a result, by God's Holy Spirit, we cry again, Abba, Father. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. 
Have you been adopted into the family of God? I know I have. Thank God for Jesus. And because I've been the, I have the spirit of adoption, I can cry and I should desire to cry out, Abba, Father. Then in the very next verse, Romans chapter 8, verse 16, notice what else God's Holy Spirit reminds us of. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So looking at those two, starting with 16, we are the children of God, and that we have received the spirit of adoption in verse 15, and therefore we can cry and should cry, Abba, Father. If we are spiritually healthy, God's Holy Spirit grows a desire in our hearts to cry out to God, Abba, Father. I dare say, and I intend no offense, but if we do not have this desire, something is wrong spiritually because God's holy word says that we should be doing it. Why are we not doing it? We may answer, well, I didn't know I was supposed to, and that's fine, but now you do know. God's holy word declares it. It's not you know, in, in the, uh, some false translation. That comes straight from the King James. It's not an interpretation. That's simply what's written. We are the children of God with the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. One wonderful indication of a personal relationship with God should be your desire to address God as Abba, Father. You know, I think that it is just amazing to know how every member of the Holy Trinity is involved in our prayers when we say, Abba, Father. Christ Jesus taught us to pray, Abba, Father. God's Holy Spirit grows within inside of us the desire to pray, Abba, Father. And God hears us as our Abba, Father. I, I love when my children call me Daddy. They don't. They usually just call me, hey, you. Um, but um, he's joking. Uh, growing up, they, my, younger, my oldest one, when she was uh, first learning to speak, she called me a pa. That's pretty close to the same thing. And I loved that she called me that even when we first came here to America. But when she started speaking English, she dropped that a pa. And that a pa is a special word. It's not just father. It's daddy. And losing that a pa is a painful loss because I, I realize she's not intending anything uh, bad of it. But it, it's, you know, that was a special word for me when she would call me a pa. That, that just let me know how much she relies on me as her daddy. When she calls me dad or whatever, it doesn't have quite the same ring. And, and here, God declares that we should be having a, we should desire, if you will, to call him Abba, Papa. We should have that same desire. He has a desire to hear us calling him in such a loving, personal term of endearment. Abba, Father. Are we, are we being faithful to God and His love toward us? I pray that we are, but I fear we are not. Let me ask you this. When we address God as Abba, Father, does it diminish God's divinity or majesty or glory at all in any way, form or fashion? Not at all. Does it make God any less the almighty, sovereign God of all creation? No, of course not. He's still Father God. But it does make our awesome God much more approachable and enables us to grow more comfortable with God. I mean, you, you're communing with Him in prayer. You should be able to talk to Him as your own daddy, your apa, your abba. 
God wants us to approach him as children coming to a loving father. It is only when we understand what it means to call God our father or Abba father that we can live out Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16 where God's holy word declares, Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So to grow comfortable with God, we must understand that we can enjoy a family relationship with God. We can enjoy a personal relationship with God, and we should desire to address God as Abba, Father. Friends, as I have been trying to emphasize these past few weeks, how prayer is absolutely one of the most essential aspects of Christianity. Prayer is personally communicating and communing with our Creator, the Almighty God, and our Abba, Father. Other than personal Bible study, absolutely nothing can bring us closer to or, or make God happier than when we personally engage with God in personal communion through personal prayer. Not books, not r memory recitings. But Christ Jesus personally made it clear through his own personal example of just how important personal prayer is. Christ Jesus also personally made it clear of just how important personal prayer is through his teaching, especially with his model prayer. The lessons that we can learn from the Lord's model prayer should help guide us all into becoming much more powerful prayer warriors. And because prayer is a direct heart-to-heart -heart communion between us and God, the Lord's model prayer can also help us become Christians after God's own heart. So I ask you this morning, beginning today, which of these three biblical principles for growing comfortable with God will you remind yourself of and use regularly? I know which one I'm going to be working on. It, it's the Abba, Father. As I prepare these lessons, I, I learn as I go. And it, it really touched my heart to think that I should be calling him Abba, Father. What a loving relationship that represents. It's great that we can call him, you know, our Heavenly Father, you know, Creator God Almighty. That, that's great, but He's more than just that. He is your personal Father, a Daddy, if you will. We don't like using that term for whatever reason, but He's my Abba Father. He's your Abba Father as well. What an incredible blessing that is. You go to... When you think of the difference between a father and a daddy, you go to a father and ask him, excuse me, for, I don't know, some ice cream. The father may be focused on other things. And, no, that's okay. I don't, you don't need any ice cream. You know, it's bad for your teeth. Uh, or I don't have time to go toss a ball with you. But a daddy will stop what he's doing play catch with you and give you that ice cream. You think that our God is not any different? He loves us so much. And when we will come to him as our Abba, Father, it changes everything. You will learn to love him more than just a distant um, figure. He's not just this magical force like in Star Wars. He is your Abba Father. And of course, if you desire to learn to pray like Christ Jesus, be sure to be right back here in your rightful place next Sunday morning as we continue our continuing Bible study series on Teach Us to Pray. And now that we have learned how to grow comfortable with Jesus, with grow comfortable with God. Next Sunday morning, we will learn how to get to know God even better as our Abba Father. I pray that you will learn to call God Abba Father. He is your, not just, again, not just a figure off in the distance. He is the one who desires to take care of you the way your daddy did here on earth but 
even better. There's nothing that any heavenly, I mean, any earthly daddy could do that is greater than what God wants to do for you. Will you join me in learning and applying these in your own life as well? Brother Priest, will you?